All right, take two on this. Um, I haven't filmed, or I've filmed race reviews. I have not uploaded them. I might still, so we'll see. I'm hoping to have this up the day of. It's Monday right now. I just got my car back. I went and got the recall done. It looks really good. Um, they like completely replaced the front end of my steering wheel, so it looks really nice. Um, anyway, we had we just had um, Martinsville, and the guy on my shirt won. No, it's not a popular opinion to be wearing this right now, but, um, yeah, so Joey Logano won Martinsville, and cr absolutely crazy fashion, classic Martinsville, bump and run. Um, I, it, I'm, all I can say is I'm going to this race next year because the, the way all this has been panning out the last three years, two, four years, I guess, if we count 2015, 16 wasn't really much, it was just Jimmy Johnson winning it, but, um, the way it's been three of the last four years, I I need to go to this racetrack. It's my favorite on the circuit, and I get sick of going to Michigan every year and being disappointed. So I think I'm going to go to Martinsville next year, uh, as well as Michigan. Um, I was going to go to the Roval, but I think I'm going to go to Martinsville instead. I, I want to witness a short track. So the race itself wasn't great for the first two stages. Um, first stage... My best friend Denny Hamlin got out to the front to the lead and won for stage one. I hope you all know I'm sarcastic when I say he's my best friend. Um, and then stage two, Logano won. He dominated it. Um, but the thing that really got me in stage two is I really liked the battle between Hamlin and Logano. Like, it really, they put on a pretty decent show it was to the line for the stage. And then stage three, things really kicked off. I mean, there were comers and goers. Kozlowski led for a little bit and then faded back. Um, and then he rallied back to second for brief, for a little bit. And then, um, same with Truex, he got all the way up to the lead on a restart, went all the way back to six, came back. He was clearly probably the best car at the end there, I would say. I mean, you got to think, though, and this is one of the biggest things I really like about Martin Truex, is he is so talented. Um, start, had to start in the back for unapproved adjustments, I think it was. Worked his way all the way up to the lead. And almost won the race. And, like, I give him a massive kudos, like, to Martin Truex. I really hope he gets that 19 next year because um, I'm excited to see what he what he can do. Um, for those who don't know, and I know this is an unpopular opinion, and I don't really have a side. At, we're, let's just get right to it, the controversy at the end of it. So, for, like, seven laps, they were side-by-side. Side. Martin Truex and Joey Logano were side-by-side. Side. And um, Truex passes him on the final lap in turn one and two. And I agree with Real Radman here. I wouldn't have. I would have just kept up, kept him on the outside, not given him the opportunity, especially with the way Joey Logano races. I would not have given him the opportunity to give you the bump and run in turn three and four. So he he clears him, and he's coming through three and four, and he's got the lead. Logano guns right up to him, hits him right in the back bumper, moves him up the track, and then he dives it under, doors him, and then... Um, Martin Truex kind of slid out like this, and he came back into Logano, kind of moving him this way a little bit, and he squeebled, squabbled around the line. Denny Hamlin took second. Logano obviously won the race. Martin Truex is freaking pissed. I honestly cannot say I blame him, and I'm really loving that he's showing a lot of emotion. New fans need to leave him alone. Like, yeah, I'm pointing at you. You guys have to leave him alone. You guys are freaking berating him after all these things, especially with the Jimmy Johnson thing at the Roval. You gotta look at it from his perspective. He's been screwed at least three or four times this year, um, coming to the line to win a race. Like I think of Kansas, he was gonna win that race, and then Harvick shows up out of nowhere. Um, obviously the Roval, he had that race won, and Jimmy got really aggressive and wheel hopped it. And this race, he had the race won, was gonna punch his ticket to Homestead, and Logano, you know, was Logano. There's no real if ands or buts about that. That's the way Logano races, and. So I know the fan base, I'm actually surprised, is very, very split. I was expecting it all to just be hate on Logano because Logano is like the most hated driver next to Kyle Busch. And obviously the crowd was booing him, which I did not, I, I mean, I expected them to boo him. The Martinsville crowd does not like Joey Logano ever since 2015. And then they were cheering Truex, much to be expected. Truex is a fan favorite, I would say. Um, so... All I can really say is, like I said, I, I like both drivers. Um, let me just make that perfectly clear. They're two, they're two of my favorite drivers of all time. Martin Truex I've rooted for since I started watching NASCAR, mostly because he was Dale Jr.'s teammate, but, you know, 
Um, when I came back, he was obviously irrelevant. That's kind of when I became a Logano fan. I became a Logano fan late 2014. Um, I'll bring all the stories about why I'm fans of these guys in the off season. I decided that the other day I'll make videos about it. Um, but I've been fans of both of them for quite a while now. And, you know, see Martin get that win last, the championship last year was very emotional, obviously. Did it for his girlfriend and his team. And obviously they're shutting down this year. And I said it, I think, on the Las Vegas Race Review, I do want Martin Truex to win this championship. Um, even if, if, if Chase Elliott can't win it anyway, I want to see um, Martin Truex win it. But... Yeah, so I'm, I was really glad to see him show emotion, though. I love when drivers show emotion. Even Kyle Busch. Kyle, like, I will say it to the end of the time, I freaking hate Kyle Busch. But you know what? Damn if he's not good for the sport. Because he gives everyone someone to root, for, to root against. And a lot of emotion. And that's one of the reasons why the fans love him. It's why the fans love him. And I can totally I can totally understand that. So I was really happy to see Martin Truex show a little bit of emotion, you know. Um... Reminded me of Chase Elliott last year. I liked how Chase was, you know, emotional. And I, and I see people saying that this is no different than last year and that Joey's a dirty racer. Let me just tell you this. Joey moved him out of the way. Okay? Bump and run. Classic short track racing. You see it at Bristol, Martinsville. Richmond in 2016, Carl Edwards did it. And he was praised for it. But it's because it was Kyle Busch that he moved. So, um, I think if the roles were reversed, obviously Martin's going to be praised like, oh, good job. Moved this bastard that everyone hates. Um, but because it was Logano moving Truex, I think that's why there's a little bias there. Um, that not as much as it was in 2015. I will say in 2015 there was a lot more bias, more hating towards Logano. This, I think it is a little more split, but I would say it does lean more towards Logano's fault. Um do I think that he should have done it? Yes, I do 100% think he should have done it. It's a ticket to Homestead. And let me let me just make myself clear here. I'm a Alex Bowman, Chase Elliott fan. You know, they're my favorite drivers. I don't really pick one or the other that is my favorite. Um, Logano and Keselowski are probably my two next favorite drivers, with Martin Truex and Jimmy Johnson being the next. And... Um, all I can really say is this is not the same incident that happened last year with... Denny and Chase, and I see a lot of people saying that it is. I wonder if that guy thinks I'm... Okay, anyway. And I see a lot of people saying it's the same thing. Like, Kamikaze Games said it is the same thing, and if you're pissed about the Denny, Denny Hamlin, Chase Elliott incident, you should be pissed about this. Let me tell you why that's not true. What Logano did was a bump and run classic short track move. It's what he had to do. It's what he had to do to make it to Homestead. He knew that was probably his only chance to make it to Homestead, because if Chase Elliott wins... Texas or Phoenix, then whoever the fourth guy is will be out, which at the time the fourth guy was Logano. He knew that was the only way he was going to get to Homestead. Will he win the title? No. He is, I'm telling you that right now. He will not win the title. Logano fans do not get excited, okay? I like Logano. If he won the title, I wouldn't be heartbroken, but let me just tell you right now why it's not going to happen, okay? Let's, but back to what I was saying, we'll, we'll get to the whole why Logano won't win the title here in a minute. Last year, with Denny Hamlin and Chase, Denny did not lift. He shoved him right into the corner and straight up wrecked him. Do I think he meant to do it? Probably not. It, I, at the time, I was really, really angry, and that has really fueled my fire for why I hate Denny Hamlin. Um, it's not just because of that incident. I've hated him from about early 2015 to, to now. And So anyway, it's not the same. There's the dump and run, and then there's the bump and run. The dump and run is what Denny did last year. The bump and run is what Logano did this year. Um, it's, I mean, there, there's blatant when you, obvi obviously both drivers meant to do it. Logano thought, if I win, I get my ticket to Homestead. Same with Denny. If I win, I get, and I think Denny wanted to just move him, but he wrecked him. And it's just the way Denny Hamlin races, it's the way Joey Logano races. And we all just got to accept that. I've moved on since the Martinsville incident last year, and I'm already moved on from it this year. I think it was great for the fans. And that's what I said about last year is I hated that race as a Chase Elliott fan, but as a, as a NASCAR fan in general, with my drivers both sucking last year, it was nice to see. It was a good race for the fans, for just in general. Like, that's the excitement we want to see. And that's what we had this year. Now, let me tell you why Logano will not win the title. I will put it this way. If Martin Truex is eliminated this round, 
Logano's screwed. He Logano will not win the title if Martin is eliminated. I believe that he will take revenge for that. And I'm interested to see what NASCAR will do if that does happen. I am interested to see if they will do a Kenseth type deal and suspend him for the Daytona 500 in Atlanta next year if he does sign with Gibbs. Um, I don't know. I'm interested to see if they'll do that. I don't think they will because Martin Truex sells tickets. He sells merchandise. Kenseth did not. Kenseth didn't sell tickets. He didn't sell merchandise. Uh, you go to tracks nowadays, you see a lot of Truex gear, you see a lot of Harvick gear, Bush, Chase, all those drivers. Um, but you go, let's say back to 2015 when I went to my first race, it was all junior gear and Gordon gear. I didn't see hardly any, hardly any, uh, Kenseth gear. Even in 2016, I didn't see a lot of Kenseth gear. It was a lot of Chase Elliott gear, Dale Jr. gear, um, Tony Stewart, because it was final year. Um, last year, same thing. Chase Elliott, Dale Jr., all that. So, I don't think they'll do that. Now, let, now let's take the scenario if Martin Truex does make it to Homestead, which I think he's going to. I think it's pretty much set unless Chase Elliott wins a race. I think the final four is set. So if Martin Truex does make it to Homestead, do I think that he's going to just intentionally go for Logano? No. I think he's going to be smart about it. But if he is in the situation where him and Logano are the top two, he's going to think, oh, Martinsville. And Logano will be done. It's as simple as that. And do I blame, am I, I'm going to say right now, if he does wreck Logano, I'm okay with it. It's, in the Kenseth incident, I was pissed with Kenseth. I've moved on since then. I don't care. I think Kenseth was justified, and I understand why he did it. Um, and plus, he gave Gordon his final win, so can't be too mad about that. So, either way, Logano will not win the title. Do not get your hopes up. If he does win the title, then I really hope NASCAR realizes how freaking stupid this points format is, and you need to get rid of winning your hand. It seems to be the simple playoffs from 2004 to 2007 or whatever it was. The 10 drivers, whoever comes out on top wins. Um, so we'll see. So predictions for next week at Texas. I do expect Martin Truex to be very strong. I think he's got a chip on his shoulder now. I think he's going to go out there. I don't want to say he's the underdog, but I think he's going to have a good chance. I also think of Chase Elliott. Alan Gustafson said he's looking he's looking forward to Texas, so that means they have a oh, excuse me. It means they have a good mile and a half car for next week. So I expect those two to be very strong. In terms of underdog, I'm going to say Jimmy Johnson. You cannot count him out of Texas. He has won there what eight times now, um, and I also think that will be his last chance to win. And if he does not win, he will be going winless this year. Um, he did. He got a new sponsor too. We'll talk about that in a different video. Um, and then for who, for my who's gonna suck, I, I I don't know. I'm thinking, I'm thinking Joey Logano might, because I'm thinking he might, you know, I'm, he has, they haven't really been great on mile and a half. So yeah, he's been consistent, but I don't think he's gonna be up there contending for the win. Um, I'm also gonna throw Bubba Wallace in there because he sucks every week. Don't get me wrong, I like him and everything, but he needs to get out of that car. He sucks. Well, not he doesn't suck. The team sucks. My bad. I, I should word that differently. Sorry, sorry, Black Flags matter if you're watching this. I didn't mean it. <laughs> so anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm Showman the Bowman. I'm going to cut it here because I'm getting close to the minute cap because I'm not a YouTube partner. So uh, if you're ready to comment, like, and subscribe, I hope this makes it on YouTube. If it doesn't, I'll try to – I'll we'll see you guys next week if I make another one. So anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.